All right, boys and girls, welcome to lesson 4.5, problem solving, multiplying with money. Our essential question is, how can the strategy draw a diagram help you solve a decimal multiplication problem? This is a great lesson. I'm excited to do it with you. I love it. So let's get started. Now in your GoMath book for lesson 4.5, question one is done for you, but I just wanna walk you through it just so you can see why they did what they did and how they drew the diagram. Let's look at our question. It says, three friends go to the local farmer's market. Ashley spends $8.25. So just look right over here. What the person did was they made a name for Ashley and they put one box to put how much money she spent. She spent $8.25. Natalie spends four times as much as Ashley. So if you look right here, they made four boxes for Natalie because they did four times the amount as Ashley. So they put $8.25 inside each of the four boxes. Now it says Patrick spends $9.50 more than Natalie. So let's stop and think about Patrick. You can make Patrick's name and then notice how they put the same amount as Natalie but they also included a little extra portion just for him to show $9.50, because that's $9.50 more. So we found Ashley's total. We found Natalie's total to be $33. Patrick's total was $33 plus an extra $9.50. So the question says, how much does Patrick spend? Well, you have to figure out Natalie's to figure out Patrick, and he spent $42.50. All right, let's look at question two together. All right, for question two, it says, Kimmy's savings account has a balance of $76.23 in June. By September, her balance is five times as much as her June balance. Between September and December, Kimmy deposits a total of $87.83 into her account. If she does not withdraw any money, remember, withdraw means to take away. What should Kimmy's balance be in December? So let's stop and think about what we know so far. Go back to the top. It says Kimmy's savings account has a balance of $76.23 in June. Will you do me a favor in your Go Math book? And I want you to make a box. And we're going to label that June. And what is her balance in June? We need to put $76.23. Now go ahead and write that inside there. Now... By September, her balance is five times as much as her June balance. So what do you think we should do for September? Think about it. I'm going to write September. I need to make how many boxes for September? We should make five because it's five times the amount. So go ahead in your book and make five boxes for September because it means five times the amount. And we need to put the value of June in every one of those boxes because it's five times the amount of June. So let's all write 76 and 23 hundredths, $76 and 23 cents there, $76 and 23 cents, and $76 and 23 cents. Will you do that with me for all of those? All right, I'm just gonna go ahead and put my dollar sign here because we are talking about money. All right, now, let's quickly find out our total right now for September. September total is $76.23 times five. In our diagram, we showed $76.23 five different times. Now you can either do repeated addition to find that or you can just multiply. Let's go ahead and multiply together. Five times three hundredths would be 15 hundredths. I'm gonna regroup. Five times two tenths is 10 tenths plus one more would be 11 tenths. Let's regroup. Five times six Ones is 30 plus one more is 31. Let's regroup. And five times seven tens is 35 tens plus three more would be 38 tens. Now we're going to know that we have to have two spots to the right because we're dealing with decimals to the hundredths. There we go. So we would say already in September, she has $381.15. But that's not the answer to our question, is it? Because we have to know that between September and December, she deposits a total of $87.83. Deposits means that she's gonna put it in. She's gonna add it to her account. So really, all we have to do now is we have to put down for December, I'm going to make this a little bit easier, and I'm just going to write down the total that we came up with. 
$381.15 and I'm just going to add what she had saved up as well. Let's go ahead and add $87.83. So we want to add those two together. So find a nice spot in your book and let's go ahead and put down $381.15. Now that was her September total. Then she deposits or she adds $87.83. Let's add that up. She should have 98 cents. Eight in the ones place. 16 tens means we have to regroup. So total, we would say her balance in December should be $468.98. All right, this is how you draw a diagram, which is our essential question, to solve a math word problem. All right, let's go on to the next question. All right, let's look at the question and see what it's asking us. It says Amy raises $58.75 to participate in a walkathon. Jeremy raises $23.25 more than Amy. Oscar raises three times as much money as Jeremy. How much money does Oscar raise? So we have to go back and find out what Jeremy raised in order to figure out what Oscar made. So let's start out with Amy. Amy raised $58.75. Let's go ahead and put Amy's name right here. And I'm just going to make one box. And let's all write $58.75 right there just to show Amy's total. Now it says Jeremy raised $23.25 more than Amy. So let's go ahead and make a J right here for Jeremy. And I'm going to put Amy's total. But what did we have to also put next to that? He raised $23.25 more than Amy. So let's add $23.25. and Go ahead and write that there. So let's go ahead and find a nice spot in your book where you can work that out. $58.75, I'm going to line up $23 below it and $0.25. Cents. Let's go ahead and add that up to find Jeremy's total because we cannot get Oscar's total without Jeremy's total. So let's start out by adding up our hundredths first. Five hundredths plus five hundredths is ten hundredths, so we're going to regroup. Seven plus two plus one will be ten in my tenths place. I can't do that, so let's regroup. Ten tenths equals one whole, so we're going to put a ten like that, and that equals one whole we're regrouping. Drop down your decimal point. 8 plus 3 plus 1 whole is going to be 12. 8 plus 3 plus 1 is 12. And then 5, 6, 7, 8. So now we know eight. Jeremy has $82 total. So I'm just going to write $82 right here below Jeremy's total just so we know how much he has. And now let's figure out Oscar's total. Oscar raises three times as much money as Jeremy. All right, are you ready to figure this one out? All right, we're going to figure out Oscar's going to be three times the amount of Jeremy's. So if I were to do this as a model, I can make three boxes for Oscar. And because we know that Jeremy raised $82 and Oscar raised three times Jeremy's amount, I can just write inside my box as neat as I can, $82, and I'm going to do that three times. And when I show my work, you can either do repeated addition, because that's what multiplication is. You can add 82 three times, or you can just multiply $82 times 3. 3 times 0, 3 times 0, 3 times 2 holes is 6 holes, 3 times 8 is 24 in my tenth tens place and now we're going to go ahead and figure out there's two spots to my decimal point on my right so I need to have two spots here so we can say Oscar raised two hundred forty six dollars way to go Oscar alright so that's how you can draw the diagram for that question alright let's look at the last one we're gonna do together before you do your homework questions on the back it says for number four it costs five dollars and fifty cents per hour to rent a pair of ice skates for up to two hours after two hours, the rental cost per hour decreases to $2.50. How much does it cost to rent a pair of ice skates for four hours? All right, let's stop and think about what we know. For the per hour, it's going to be $5.50, but that's for two hours. 
After two hours, it's cheaper. It's only $2.50. So if you wanted to do this for four hours, you have to first of all do it in parts. The two hour cost, and then the second group of two hours, which would equal the total of four hours. So I'm gonna start off. Let's go ahead and do this together. If it's $5.50 per hour, we'll say this is hour number one, hour number two. And in each one of those hours, it's gonna be $5.50. All right, I'm gonna make my little dollar sign right here just to show that I'm working with money. All right, so we have $5.50. Now this shows my first two hours. It's $5.50 per hour to repair, rent a pair of ice skates for two hours. After two hours, it decreases to $2.50 per hour. So let's go ahead and make our next two hours. Now what should I write in these two boxes? Okay, I'm going to write $2.50. Now, this shows my four hours because it says how much does it cost to rent a pair of ice skates for four hours? One hour, two hours, three hours, four hours. Now, you can choose to add it up or you can do two times 550 plus two times 250 and then add those two together. Um, do whatever is easiest for you, but go ahead and pause the video and find your total. Okay, you should have said for the first two hours, it cost $11 to rent the skates. For the second two hours, it was only $5. When you add 11 plus 5, you should have said that the price for four hours of ice skating will cost $16. I hope our answer is matched up. Okay, go ahead and turn your Go Map book over to the next page. And I want you to solve questions one and two on your own. Show your work. If you need to do it on a piece of notebook paper to have extra room, that's fine. Just bring it to class tomorrow to show us your work. And then also don't forget to do questions three through six. And I would like you to rate yourself at the top of this page just so I can see what you feel like you are in this topic of drawing a diagram to solve a math problem with multiplication and money. Um, label yourself one, two, three, or four, and we will do more practice problems together in class to become experts. All right, I hope you have a great night tonight after homework, and we'll see you tomorrow. Don't forget to bring your Go Math book to class tomorrow. Have a great night. Bye-bye.